First game of the year is going to reveal a lot. What are some things you're most excited to kind of learn about your team as you, as you take the field Friday? Um, I, I don't know that the first game's going to reveal a lot or not. To be honest with you, I, I think it's it's another opportunity for us to get together out there. And every day that we're out there uh, reveals something. So it's just another day for us to get a chance to be together, which is awesome. It's a fun experience to be with these guys. They've been really fun. Any idea what the rotation is going to look like this weekend? Um, yeah, I think we'll um, – I think Coach Angier said we're going to go Mercado on game one and then the three freshmen uh, after that. Ullman, Leo Ullman. Uh, and then uh, Matthew Grabman, and then uh, Jackson Pace. You know, they've all really pitched well um, in the scrimmages that we've had, and we're excited to roll that out there. Mercado's been a bulldog out of the bullpen. Does that same mentality translate well to a, being a Friday night guy, you think? Well, time will tell. You never know until you actually put a guy in that spot and, and uh, put him out there. Have you been pleased with the competition in the scrimmages so far? It's been unbelievable. Yeah, the competition's been great. Um, Depending on the day, the pitchers have either gotten the better of the hitters or the hitters have gotten the better of the pitchers. Uh, these guys were rolling out there uh, with the four starters have been consistent and very good throughout, um, amongst others too, you know. And so we'll have some bullets in the back end of the bullpen as well, um, which is good. Um, and I don't know, we're, we're just antsy to see somebody else in a different uniform on our field. What was it about Mercado that not only you guys pushed him to being a starter, but the Friday night guy? Uh, just, uh, he's just done well, you know, I don't think there's any other answer other than that. He was really good last year for us, probably out of the group that's returning without looking at a stat sheet. I think he probably was, uh, maybe the most reliable guy we had, uh, last year. You knew that he was going to go out there and, and be really good. I think he pitched really well last year. I think he was honored with something preseason. I don't look at too many of those, uh, honorees or rankings with what they get with preseason all conferences but I if I recall he was he was uh, awarded something by the coaches in the league they think highly of him and he's just earned it from his you know what he's doing out there Harold Reynolds coming to practice pretty cool deal for the for the young players to hear from a big personality in the game of baseball what was his message to the group and what does that relationship mean to Oregon baseball well, Harold's not afraid to talk. He's really good at it. That's what he gets paid to do right now for a living after an awesome pro career. And, yeah, we were blessed to have him come out to our field and uh, be a part of a lot of our week last week. Um, he's just a really smart guy. He brings an element of, of uh, just security because he knows baseball so well. Uh, he brings an element of just honesty and frankness. And he's been around so many greats that, you know, when he's talking about playing alongside of Cal Ripken, uh, that – that's enough said. You know, if you can't gain something from a guy like that, you're probably uh, you're probably in a bad place. What's the area of greatest uncertainty for you during the season was? Well, I mean, for me, obviously, I would say the biggest area of uncertainty would be um, well, number one is Colby Shade uh, okay from the off-season shoulder injury that he had, and so far so good. The answer is yes, but he's and he's progressed uh, incredibly well. Um, the second one would be Drew Cowley because he endured a pretty major injury last year in the middle of the year, and he was only leading the country when in hitting when that happened, and so that's a big deal. Um, replacing a guy like Josh Kasovich at shortstop is a big question. Um, Gavin Grant's played exceptionally well, as has the freshman behind him, Carter Garotti, but that's a big deal. When you're losing a guy that was drafted highest in the country at the shortstop position, you know, that's, that's pretty hard to replace. Um, and then just pitching, you know, I, I thought – uh, last year, um, yeah, I thought we pitched well at times, and I didn't think we pitched um, at the level that we wanted to pitch at. And, you know, we've got some really talented young pitchers now in our program. Um, ideally, I'd love to be able to roll out three first-team All-Americans on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and we're not doing that right now, not yet. These kids are freshmen, and they need to earn that those honors. Um, but they've, they've pitched incredibly well. And so the youth of the pitching, um, in addition to the other ones that I mentioned. It's the wrap that he has to wear for hitting. Is that going to be like a season-long thing just because of the injury, or is that something he's going nah, to work he out? Was, no, he's already out of that and was just in that for precautionary right after the, the new year. During scrimmages, you guys used Josh Malaris as like a pseudo-closer. Do you anticipate using him in the same role this year? Well, we didn't have him last year uh, to use him. But, yeah, I, do, I, do, I think you're spot on with that with Josh. I mean, he could – 
He's shown that he can be a dominant closer. He's also shown that he can he can extend out, you know. And so I think he's kind of a hybrid guy. We can use him. He's resilient. He can bounce back quickly, um, you know. And so he could probably do a multiple one inning type things on a weekend, or he could probably do uh, three inning type close uh, on a weekend, you know. So he's flexible and willing to play any role. But we're look, looking at him at the back of the game. What's your your confidence level and your three freshman lefties in the bullpen right now. I've seen Grayson Gritzel has come out a lot of times. Just what have you seen from those guys? Regardless of whether it's a freshman or an old guy or whatever, I mean, it's the game that shows up and can they manage it and can they handle it? And you, you can't predict that, you know. And so even the talented players we have in the field, um, when they're new, where they're freshmen, even junior college transfers, um, the game's different. A game's different than a scrimmage. A game's different than your practices. And so there's a lot of talent. I love the talent that we have. Uh, a lot of people have talked a lot about that. And it's clear they were right. There's a, it's a talented group. But now it's it's time to see how they can handle the game and how they handle a, somebody wearing a different uniform. Do they change and turn into somebody else? Um, hopefully not. Hopefully they've been trained well enough to not do that. But sometimes that happens. Has there been a catcher that's emerged so far during the scrimmages in this winter baseball, spring baseball yet between Thompson and Cromwick and Anson? Cromwick's been the best guy. Anson is very, very talented. Um, you know, and he's day to day right now. He's fighting a couple of things. Thompson's been reliable and steady as has Chase Meggers. You know, the guy that probably last weekend, uh, I don't know if he caught the best, but he was really impressive back there. Uh, he might have caught the best um, and was really impressive with Sabine Ceballos last weekend. I mean, he, he was incredible. He was probably our player of the weekend last weekend, and, and he's a catcher, and he plays a lot of places. So um, I'm confident in the depth that we have at that spot. Do you anticipate Sabine playing catcher a lot this season? I know he's primarily played first and third so far during the spring. Yeah. Yeah, he can, he can play catcher for sure. He was drafted by the Angels as a catcher, so a lot of that may be his strongest professional um, position, at least according to one team last year it was. So. What's it like having Riku Nishida in this year as like a, maybe a pure leadoff guy, someone who can get on base, steal bases? I think the fans are really going to like Riku. I think they're going to really like Sabine. Uh, we've got a we've got an interesting locker room this year. You know, it, it's coming from different parts of the world, and they play like it. They they and what I mean by that is they play with the every place as you watch the World Baseball Classic. There's just a different energy. There's a different energy that everybody, and that's the beauty of baseball, is you can learn so much from players from other parts of the world. Riku's game is, it's a trip. You know, just the way he plays baseball, slaps the ball all around the field, hard to defend, loves to steal bases, a uh, tremendous feel of the game. Uh, you know, Ceballos, um, you know, he really does play with a tremendous Latin flair. Uh, a lot of excitement. I can't jump as high as him on a home run. He wants me to jump and hit his hand, but uh, it's hard to do because he's a big guy to begin with and he's athletic. But he's just, he, bring, he brings an element of fun to the field, as does Riku, and keeps the locker room loose. And uh, those guys have just been a joy to coach. Because it's so early in the season, are you guys planning on setting a pitch limit or a pitch count on some of these guys going forward? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. These guys are all still in their buildup phase. And so. You know, um, in a lot of ways, you know, the guys that start games and stuff like that, it's probably a little less important early in the year because the guys that you have on your pitching staff are all probably going to pitch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are pitch limits going on right now early in the year. And so whether they're starting a game and they're throwing the first few innings, reaching that limit, or they're coming in first and they're reaching their limit there, doesn't really matter. you gotta, you got to probably throw, if you're going to win, you're probably going to throw 120 to 140 pitches in that game. And so... You know, you manage your guys the way you need to. How do you know, or when you go about the strategy of a player like Riku, where you talk about, like, prototypically, that's either a one or a nine. But there's a very big difference of most plate appearances versus least. And with a young player and a guy who you haven't had in the lineup before, like, how do you go about the strategy and the decision making of what extreme you want to go to there? It'll come down to what he earns. You know, and so far what he's earned. I mean, he was unbelievable last weekend and has been really consistent. Um, and what he's consistent at is playing real quality defense and just getting on base. He's a pest. Um, hard guy to strike out. Extends pitch counts deep. Um, not afraid to bunt for hits. Uh, he's the ultimate team player, and, and he's just 
when when Riku, whenever he's finished playing baseball, he will be an unbelievable coach. I mean, he he doesn't speak English great, and still yet he's probably one of the best coaches we have, including the coaches on the coaching staff right now. He's just that type of infectious personality and with that kind of knowledge. It's really something to, to be around that kid. What's the excitement like this week in practice in the dugout, just leading up to the opening opening day? Well, I'll tell you, today's our first practice of the week, so I'll <laughs> tell you after today. I don't know, but I'm sure the guys are pretty excited. Yeah, they were at breakfast this morning. Snow during opening week, build a little character for him. I don't know what you're talking about. It's sunny and 75. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Coach. All right, guys. Thanks for the coverage.